So uh, like uh, David mentioned, I will uh, present here some data augmentation strategies, uh, mainly to improve performance on low resolution imageries. Uh, it's work uh, that I did during my uh, during my last two years of my PhD. So, uh, so, so in particular, we will discuss uh, how to improve the throughput for two traits acquired from UAV. One is uh, maize plants uh, maize plant counting at early stage, and the other one is wheat head counting uh, for images acquired from UAV. Uh, so, so in the first study, um, so yes, like we. Uh, just why this trait is important because it's uh, we need it's important to understand the uh, emergence and also to predict the the yield potential for a certain genotypes and so on. So the motivation for the uh, uh, for the study is to see uh, if we can uh, uh, if we can have maize plant uh, if we can uh, accurately estimate maize plant density from uh, low resolution UAV imageries because this would allow us to uh, fly at a higher altitude so that we can cover larger areas uh, in a lower time. And uh, so, so, in, so during the study, what, uh, we will also uh, look at some uh, different data augmentation strategies which can help us to uh, uh, adapt to this uh, scale problem. Um, so first, the datasets are used in the study. So here uh, we have dataset acquires in eight sites in France. So for the training of the models, we have a, a high resolution uh, dataset from six sites. So when I say high resolution, it's about uh, the, the GSD with approximately 0 0.3 uh, centimeters. And then for the validation or for the testing of the models, we have a dataset acquired at uh, two sites. And in these two sites, uh, we did flights at two altitudes. Uh, so that we have a high resolution uh, test data set at 0 0.3 uh, centimeter GSD. And uh, again, uh, a, a low resolution data set on the exact same microplots uh, at uh, 0 0.6 centimeter. Uh, and, uh, for the, uh, and for the detection, we use FASTRA CNN, uh, which is uh, more or less uh, 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 standard and it is, is proves to be robust for large objects. Excuse me, uh, uh, just to to be sure, is this pixel to pixel uh, correspondence, or is this on two different cameras with two different resolution? Is is the angle of view of the of this uh, low and high resolution uh, the same? Or, um, uh, well, but they were acquired from UAV, so I, I don't think there is a pixel to pixel correspondence uh, really. But yeah. it's almost the same if you are high from uh, the the scene. Uh, yes. So yes, it's the same scene uh, take, uh, taken with uh, maybe one hour difference between the two okay. acquisitions. But I don't think there is no there is not a pixel to pixel correspondence. Okay. Thank you. Um, so so for uh, so that's the first step. We first try to train the model on our high resolution training dataset, and we uh, evaluate the model performance on the. Uh, uh, on our test site, so on the high resolution test site and the low resolution uh, data set. So here we see that at the high resolution, um, we have relatively very good performance. But then on the low resolution, the uh, model fails to generalize. And uh, this we uh, we know there are two problems. One is the problem, uh, yes, the main problem is that uh, fast -trial CNN uh, was trained on one scale and we try to apply it on another scale so it doesn't. Uh, uh, generalized to this uh, low resolution domain. Um, so now we will focus on how to improve this performance here. Uh, so for this, uh, there are two potential ways to uh, improve the performance. So the first one is to simulate a low resolution training dataset and train our model on this uh, dataset. And another option would be uh, to upscale our uh, low resolution images. So for this upscaling, we will compare two methods. So one is the classical bike cubic interpolation, and the other one would be a super resolution method using uh, uh, deep learning. Uh, so for the super resolution method, uh, so I'm happy that Michael gave a good introduction about uh, GANs. So here you will, um, so what we try to do is uh, so in our super resolution method, there are uh, uh, two, two different, uh, it's a two stage network. Uh, so in the first stage, we have a cycle GAN, uh, which will try to learn um, 
uh, the noises, uh, real world noises from the low resolution data set. So why they use a cyclic GAN is uh, because, so in general, in super, uh, in, uh, when, when they train super resolution uh, networks, they just uh, try to go from uh, paired low resolution to uh, high resolution images. But to have this kind of uh, paired data set is quite difficult. And so what they do is they just do a bicubic uh, down sampling uh, in general, and uh, go from the B-cubic downsampled image to the original high resolution image. But uh, using this in the real world scenario, um, when we use this in the real world scenario, we actually suppress or we actually delete all the uh, um, real world uh, sensor noises uh, that we see in uh, generally acquired uh, images in the real world scenario. So what we wanted to do was to uh, make a a paired data set between a, a real world uh, low and high resolution uh, data set um, using unsupervised methods. So we use the cycle again to learn the distribution between the real world noise and the B-cubic. Um, and so that's uh, so once we give a B-cubic image, uh, the cycle again should be able to uh, emulate the real world noise on the big uh, on the B-cubic down sampled image. And then uh, we have an indirect um, uh, real world uh, high and low data set, which uh, we will uh, uh, which will be used to train the uh, super resolution model. So for the super resolution network, we use ES again. Uh, so in the inference phase, and so we will uh, give us input our uh, low, uh, the images from the low resolution domain, and only the super resolution uh, the ES again network is activated, and we have a, a normally super, uh, super resolved uh, image. So, uh, so here to evaluate the performances. So, so like I mentioned before, the, uh, in the first step, we tried to simulate the low resolution data set. So for this, we tried to just bicubically, simply bicubically downsample the image, but uh, it was not uh, really very realistic. So we applied, a, uh, we downsampled by a Gaussian filter and then apply a small motion blur. And uh, even then the, uh, yes, so we have something which is a little bit more similar to the native uh, low resolution image. So we apply this uh, Gaussian down sampling to our training data set to have uh, uh, to simulate a low resolution training data set, uh, which we train on our models. And we see here that uh, we have, okay, the performance is, uh, is better than on the, than when we trained directly on the high resolution data set. Um, and then uh, on this part, we, um, and then we also uh, tried the other comparison. So where we uh, use the model train on our high resolution data set and we apply to our upscaled uh, images. So, and we apply to the big cubically upsampled images. There, there's maybe uh, slight improvements, but it's still really bad. But with the super resolution, uh, we observe that there are, um, I guess there are some improvements, but still uh, we see that the performance on these uh, images is not uh, as high as on the, original uh, high resolution images and uh, so one of the uh, yes so so one of the advantages with the super resolution method is that um, it adds some uh, textures uh, that was that is okay it's, sometimes it's an advantage because it adds textures which helps the detection model to identify the uh, plants uh, better but in some cases it also adds some uh, textures where uh, there are no plants. For example, if there is a tractor track on the images, it could uh, it can uh, add some features thinking that it's a plant shadow. So so in these kind of situations, uh, you know, the GAN uh, behaves a little bit um, unexpectedly. And maybe one option to control this could be to um, use a, or train the super resolution network along with the detection network so that we have some information about uh, where to expect plants and uh, and so that the model uh, learns to add textures, uh, uh, learns more about the plants when it's generating the images because here it has no specific information. We are doing really unsupervised. So, um, yes. um, so to conclude, uh, uh, we, uh, so, yes, so still the best performance with the, uh, for plant detection uh, we uh, are observed over the high resolution data set. Uh, the model, uh, yes, the fast tracing is uh, quite sensitive to the special resolution. 
uh, we could use some kind of uh, data augmentation techniques to improve the performance over the low resolution data set. Um, and another problem with our low resolution data set was also the uh, camera was not uh, maybe well configured during the acquisition because the same acquisition settings were used at the at the two altitudes. So um, and we, uh, this is also something that needs to be uh, improved. And super resolution techniques can help us to improve the performance on low resolution data set. But uh, we need to make more studies to um, avoid unwanted artifacts in our images. And then uh, on the next part, um, for the uh, weight head density from UAV images. So the motivation here is that uh, yes, it would be uh, when if uh, the throughput of acquiring weight head density from UAV images would be uh, um, would help us to solve the sampling issues that we usually have when we uh, do acquisition at the ground level. And it would also have a higher throughput and uh, lower cost. And we also have a very uh, a large annotated data set at the ground level, the global wheat head data set. Uh, so we would like to see if we can exploit this ground level data set uh, to perform counting on the uh, images acquired from UAVs. Uh, so for this, our training data set would be the global wheat head data set from 2020. And uh, the test data set is the, uh, for, so for the test data set, we acquired the data set on three sites. Uh, so we had acquisitions at the ground level uh, using a handheld sensor. And then we also had acquisitions uh, on the same sites using a UAV. And we selected uh, 30, micro, 30 microplots per each site um, and annotated them. Um, so here we were also interested to compare uh, the performance of two different types of uh, deep learning methods to, uh, to derive the density. So one is the fast trial CNN that we, uh, use, uh, that we use on the, um, the object detection based method, uh, which we use on large scale images, and we know that it works uh, relatively well. And we also wanted to test the use of uh, counting by regression methods, because in the, the scene from uh, UAV is uh, a little bit more, uh, it's more denser, and you also expect to see more overlap. Uh, so since regression methods are more, um, uh, yes, can handle better uh, image the overlap, we, we were interested to test uh, methods. So for this, we use SFC2Net, um, a recent method which was uh, demonstrated for uh, uh, rise density estimations from ground level images. So, and then uh, once again, we uh, we try to uh, apply a transformation to the ground level images to make it more similar to the UAV images, because we observe that it's not only the size of the objects which is different, but also the amount of information uh, or the texture information between the two data sets is also quite different. So we apply a, a Gaussian motion blur to these. Uh, uh, to, the, uh, to a part of the global data dataset as a data augmentation technique uh, while training. Uh, so, uh, so here, uh, so we trained the mo uh, so here it's just a comparison between um, between the two models. Uh, when we apply uh, uh, without data augmentation, so we just do a down sampling by by cubic, and then it's with a, a random data augmentation of applying Gaussian blur and, uh, and uh, with the downscaling. Uh, so here, I'm sorry that it's a bit, uh, it's a lot of values. So but just to be quick, so we have the results for the three sites. And in general, for uh, for the two models, apply using the data augmentation uh, uh, improves the performance. Um, and in particular for the SFC2Net, we see that when we do not use a, uh, the Gaussian blur uh, during the training phase, um, the, the, the image uh, the model performance is uh, is quite low, so maybe this could be because the regression based methods are more um, susceptible to changes uh, uh, changes in the domain. Uh, whereas so fast CNN, even though we observe an improvement, um, uh, yes, it's maybe like five to six percent. Um, uh, the difference between the two, uh, two models is just five to six percent. Uh, so. So here's just a scatter plot between the two. 
And uh, so here we, we observe that the regression-based methods are are less biased or are unbiased, uh, whereas the fast transcendence appears to be, uh, to, yes, always tends to have a kind of underestimation. Um, so to conclude, uh, we demonstrate that we are able to count on uh, UAV images using data set acquired at, annotated at the ground level. And uh, maybe counting by regression methods provide more unbiased in, than, uh, estimates in the uh, in a crowded scenario. So thank you. So if you have some questions.